in my life that I needed to have breakthrough. And that's the title of this message uh, for tonight is Receive Your Breakthrough. And, uh, and Mary has joined us, so we, we thank the Lord for that. And there'll be probably some others to join us in just a few minutes. Uh, but that's the title, Receive Your Breakthrough. And there are, there are things that we can do uh, as individuals to help that process get on the way. And we know that it's um, the Spirit of God um, that brings us uh, that breakthrough. And what do I mean by breakthrough? I mean, having our prayers answered uh, and um, receiving the promises of God, receiving um, everything that he has for us. Last week, uh, Brother Fred taught us that we need to fight for his best. And, um, and I have a, we have a wonderful woman that is in our ministry and uh, we've known her for about 30 years and she has been trying to make a decision about uh, a transportation, her vehicle. And um, I believe that that message from last week I shared some of that message with her yesterday uh, because she keeps wanting to, to fix the old vehicle and to put a new engine in the old vehicle. And, and I said, just, uh, you, you know, sometimes we have to fight for the best. And what is the best for you? That's what we want. And, and so uh, later she texted me, we hung up and and I went on to do something else. And she texted me back and said, I believe the Lord wants a new vehicle for me. And I said, hallelujah. I believe that and I can catch hold with you. And I am in agreement uh, with that, uh, that the Lord has a dependable vehicle for you and he wants the best. And so when, when I say breakthrough, um, uh, that's really, I'm, I'm just kind of extended the message, uh, from last week that we have to fight for the best, but we also have to fight for breakthrough. And I'm going to go to second Chronicles, uh, chapter 20. And the, the message is primarily, uh, going to be taken from this passage about, and it's a, a very familiar passage about Jehoshaphat and he was surrounded by a large army coming against him and from all sides you know and there are times when in our life when when we feel pressed we just uh, like a vice grip uh it might be you know from from family it might be from oh there's lucy and baby luke hallelujah um but we're uh, lucy we're talking about breakthrough tonight uh, we're talking about receiving our breakthrough. And in 2 Chronicles 20, Jehoshaphat was surrounded on all sides with this great army. And they came to him in, in verse 1, and they said, um, you know, there's they've, they've come to, uh, to battle with us. And, um, and in verse 2, it says, Then there came some that told him, Jehoshaphat, there's a great multitude that's come against us. And in verse three, I love what verse three says. And what I want you to glean, do you know what gleaning is? Gleaning is what we do when we go into the scriptures and we ask the Holy Spirit to bring forth the, the message that he has for us. And what are the, what are the nuggets that are in there? And I, I call that gleaning, just like in a field of wheat. Uh, we're going to glean uh, from the word of God tonight. And we're going to glean five different things that will help us to receive our breakthrough. Whatever it might be, it might be finances, it might be um, our family situation, it might be our work situation, uh, whatever it might be. It might be our healing for our body. Um, so whatever it might be, we're going to receive it tonight. And, and so we're going to glean from the scripture 
uh, five different things from this passage that will help us. And it says in verse three, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself. You know, I love that that phrase, set himself. What does that really mean? It means that he he focused, he concentrated, he meditated. Uh, you know, God told Joshua, meditate on the word day and night, and then your way will be made prosperous. And so Jehoshaphat set himself and to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast throughout all of Judah. Whew. And Judah gathered herself together to ask help of the Lord. How many times have we gone to, to someone else, uh, to a friend, to, to our pastor, to um, um, some doctors and, uh, and, and other professionals uh, to, to get help? But here it says that they wanted to ask the Lord for help. And I believe that he's the one that's going to bring us our breakthrough. Hallelujah. And it says that they all gather together and uh, to seek the Lord. And uh, Jehoshaphat in verse five, he stood in the congregation in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And, and he said, you know, we're going to, uh, oh, inhabitants of, 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 of Judah, we're going to seek the Lord here. We're going to see uh, what he would say unto us. We're going to fast. We're going to pray. And we're going to receive a breakthrough about this battle and about this great army that's surrounding us. We're not going to be pressured. We're not going to be stressed. Uh, we're, we're going to seek the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. So that's number one on my list. As we glean from this passage right here, we're going to seek the Lord. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. What, what will be added unto you? Everything that you need to get your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Maybe it's a new mindset. Uh, maybe it's a, um, help financially. Uh, hey, hey, Jen. Uh, so it's great to see everyone. So number one, to receive your breakthrough, we're going to seek the Lord because that's what Jehoshaphat said. We want the help of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And so let's go on. And it says in verse nine, when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, our pestilence, our famine, we stand before this house in the very presence, oh, hallelujah, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help us. You know, it says that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. And any time you, you need help, the Lord is there. You don't have to wait on him. You don't have to uh, get in line. The Lord is always with you. Whoo, hallelujah. You know, that's an encouragement to me. And I pray that it's an encouragement to you that he's always with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's right there. You don't have to search him out. You don't have to uh, wonder, you know, if he's there or not. Because it says that he's going to be right there with you. So we're going to seek the Lord first. That's number one. And then let's look down here in verse um, 12. In verse 12, we find number two. Number two nugget of how to receive your breakthrough, and that is judgment on your enemies. It says in verse 12, O oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company of army that comes against us. Neither knoweth we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Hallelujah. Now, so we can call down judgment on the head of our enemies. We can call judgment down on sickness and disease. We can call judgment down on anxiety and depression and, and any type of wrong thinking. We can call judgment down on poverty and lack uh, in the name of Jesus. And it says in John 16, 
uh, verses 7 through 11. It says that that's part of the Holy Spirit's job. Let's just turn over there right quick and put our eyes on John chapter, uh, John 16. This is the workings of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit does for you. And I'm in verse 7. It says, nevertheless, I will tell you, I tell you the truth. It's, it's to your advantage. This is Jesus speaking. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, who's our comforter but the Holy Spirit? And this, this is his job. And when he comes, I'm in verse 8. When he comes, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And you see me no more. In verse 11, this is where I want to get to. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Hallelujah. So this tells me that you can call down judgment on whatever is holding you back. Whatever is keeping you from getting your breakthrough in your healing, in your finances, in your marriage, in your children, in your family. In the workplace with your co-workers. Woo, hallelujah. We can call judgment down on the head of our enemies. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Is that not good? I, I, I tell you, praise the name of Jesus. That's number two on the list. Okay, let's go back to Second Chronicles. Now, number three. Let's go on down here. It says, and Judah stood be in verse 13. And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. And then there's two prophets that come forth. Hallelujah. Number three on my list is that we must hear from the Lord. We must hear from the Lord. You know, the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy. So when you read a scripture and it jumps off the page at you and it goes into your heart, then that is a, a word of prophecy to you. This is what I'm telling you, says the Lord, because the word of God is the word from the Father. And, and then we also have uh, those that, that, that speak prophetically. And there there's these two men right here stood up because they had a word from the Lord. You know, now these people, Jehoshaphat and his, his people had been praying and seeking the Lord. They'd been fasting. He called uh, them to sanctify themselves. And, and then these two prophets began to prophesy, I mean, one in particular. And uh, because the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he began to prophesy. And so number three on my list is that we need to hear from the, the father himself through his word or through a prophet of God or someone who prophesies, you know, and I think about those that don't like prophecy and they don't want to hear prophecy. Don't give me any prophecy. You know, it says in first Thessalonians chapter five, not to despise prophesying. Because there are times that we need to hear the voice of the Lord. Yes, amen. And you know, true prophecy, true prophecy, a word of prophecy, the gift of prophecy is to comfort, exhort, and edify. Those three things. There's nothing wrong with those three things. In fact, those three things will help us. If prophecy is supposed to bring comfort, it's supposed to exhort or encourage, and it's supposed to build up or edify if it's true prophecy. And it says, don't despise that. Don't despise it. We need it. These people needed breakthrough. Yes, yes. I'm telling you, if you need breakthrough tonight, these are some things that will help you receive it. Hallelujah. So number three on my list is that prophetic word and the prophetic word thus saith the lord i'm in verse 13 
no, excuse me, 15. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed. Now, does that bring in a comfort to you? Do not fear, don't be dismayed. Hey, listen, God has this. God has your back. God, you know, Brother Fred says that to me all the time. He, he tells me, it's okay, I've got your back. Hallelujah. And I know that he has my back. And that's a comfort to me. That's a hope that brings hope to me. Okay. Be not afraid nor dismay by reason of this great multitude that all that's all around you. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Hallelujah. Now, this is a word of prophecy that's coming forth. And it's to bring comfort. It's to bring exhortation or encouragement, and it's to build the people up. And I believe that that's what it's doing. I believe that this group of people needed to hear this word. Woo! Hallelujah. And I believe that this word, God put this word in me in the middle of the night, and I knew that it was for this group. Hallelujah. Tomorrow. Go ye down against them before they come up by the cliff of Zen, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness. You shall not need to fight in this battle, but set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord of with you, O Judah, O Jerusalem. Fear not, do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. I believe this word was comforting. I believe this word exhorted the people. And I believe this word edified them and built them up. And they said, yes, we've got the victory. We've got the breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear not. Hallelujah. The Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And he began to worship the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. That's number four on my list. When you begin to praise the Lord and you begin to worship the Lord, did you know that it sends an earthquake into your life? Hallelujah. I'm so glad, Sophia, you're here. Praise the name of Jesus because we're talking about breakthrough tonight. We're talking about receiving our breakthrough tonight. Hallelujah. And number four on my list, is to praise him, is to worship him, to get down on your face and begin to worship him. Hallelujah. Forget about what's going on around you. Forget about uh, what you've got to do in the next 30 minutes. Forget about all those other things, those natural things that try to hinder us from praising him and worshiping him. And so after Jehoshaphat and all the people heard this prophetic word, they fell on their faces and they began to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, that's when my breakthrough came with the cancer situation. I've told you this before. The test kept showing uh, that I had the the second highest malignant thyroid cancer. Every test that I took came back that it was it was still there. It was still there. And I said to the Lord one day, how come since I know that you've already healed me and you gave me a scripture, hallelujah, that I should not die but live and declare the works of the Lord, but I'm still seeing the bad test results. And the Lord said, but you haven't thanked me. That's when I fell on my face, just like Jehoshaphat. I fell on my face and I began to thank the Lord and I began to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's when, that's when the earthquake comes and that's when the shaking begins and that's when there is a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough in, in your attitude. There's a breakthrough in your mindset. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe all this is, is coming about 
to help these people who are surrounded by a great army win the battle. It says here, and they rose early. They wrote in verse 20, they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Jerusalem, O Judah, O you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe, listen to this right here. Listen, this is so important. This next verse is so important. It says, believe the Lord your God and you will be established. That means that you cannot be shaken. That means that you cannot be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Some of you are facing difficulty. Some of you are facing discouragement. Some of you are facing decisions that have to be made. Hallelujah. Well, it says here, believe the Lord and you'll be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Again. Do not despise prophesying. Re receive it. Welcome it. Hallelujah. You shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is still number four, that we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship him. He appointed singers. He appointed praisers and worshipers. How many of you know that this is a season of worship for the church? This is a season where the Lord says, I want you to worship me in spirit and in truth. And the word of God says, worship him. Let everything that has breath, if you've got breath coming out of your lungs right now, you need to be praising the Lord. Woo! Glory. We need to be praising him. So he appointed singers that should praise the beauty of the holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, it wasn't long. It wasn't a long song. It was praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. What are, they were calling upon that covenant of loving kindness. They were calling upon that covenant uh, that they had with the Lord. Hey, we have an agreement with you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. It says here, Praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Now, let's, let's just stop right here. And let's go back. Number one on my list, when you need breakthrough, is that you need to seek the Lord with all of your heart. With prayer, with fasting, studying the word of God, hearing what he has to say. Number two, ask that the Lord bring judgment on your enemies. You can do that. According to John 16, the Holy Spirit will bring judgment on your enemies. Hallelujah. And number three, we're going to hear from the Lord. We've got to hear from the Lord by reading his word, by Prophetic words that might be spoken over you in the name of Jesus. We need to hear the voice of the Lord. Number four, we need to praise him. We need to worship him. And so he sent out the singers. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, God set an ambushment against their enemies. And the enemies heard the singing. And they got all confused and they began to, to fight themselves. They began to slay themselves. They thought a huge army was out there coming against them. And Jehoshaphat and his, his people, 
moved in. The people of God moved in. And they got all of the spoils. And number five on my list is in verse 30. Number five on the list is that, and, and let's just read it. So the ram of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest round about him. Hallelujah. Number five on receiving your breakthrough is that you have entered into God's rest. And I'm going to turn over to Hebrews chapter four. There is a rest for the people of God. And that's when we believe. We believe that we have our breakthrough. We believe that, that our families are, are healed and whole. Uh, we believe uh, that God is with us. We believe uh, that he is, is our savior, our Lord. Uh, we believe that he's the one that takes care of us. We believe the word of God, hallelujah, that says he's going to be with us. And he's going to fight for us. And he and he brings judgment on the head of, of the devil. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews 4 and uh, verses 1 through 9. And you might want to go back over these verses again and just get them into your, what I call your spirit man or your gut. Uh, just, just, just let them sit there and let them um, percolate and, and, and fill you up with, with hope and encouragement. And it says, let us therefore fear the Lord, lest a promise being left of us entering into the rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as to them, but the, but the word was not mixed with, with faith. And so part of entering into that rest is that we believe and that we have faith that he is he's able to do what we've committed unto him. Have you committed your family unto him? Then you need to believe that he's able to take care of them. Hallelujah. Have you committed your finances to him? Then he's able to keep your finances and uh, and make you prosper. Uh, woo, hallelujah. Have you committed your mind unto him? Then he's going to keep your mind clear. Uh, there's two people that I'm speaking to right now that this week, this past week, your mind has become cluttered with other things. Other things other than the word of God, which hinders you getting breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's read on. You have to mix it with faith. But we which have believed do enter into his rest. I want to believe the Lord. Believe the Lord for healing. Believe the Lord uh, for, for ministry opportunities. Believe the Lord for my family to be walking with the Lord. Uh, believe uh, for, for the Lord to teach me and to, to talk to me. Uh, I want that. Brother Fred and I have been praying and, and, and believing the Lord for just fresh revelation from the word, fresh manna from heaven to bring to the people, fresh manna. And, and we have to enter into his rest for that. And it says, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from uh, the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day, and God did rest the seventh day from all of his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore there remaineth a rest, a rest for the people of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And in verse nine, it says, there remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God. But we must believe and we must mix the word with faith. We see that it says, you know, I, I talk with people all the time that say to me, oh, I believe that God heals, but I just don't know if he wants to heal me right now. Well, that's, that's not what the word says. The word says that 
he healed you and paid for it 2000 years ago. He paid for your sound mind. He paid for your, remember he had the thorns of, uh, that were put upon his head, that crown of thorns and, and the blood uh, came gushing out of his, of his forehead that, and it ran down over his forehead. That was for your mind. That was to cleanse your mind from anxiety, from, from um, panic attacks, from any type of mental illness. Uh, he's already done that for you. He's already paid for you. Hallelujah. He's already paid for healing of your body. Yeah. He's already paid for you to prosper. He's already paid the whole price. He paid the whole price for you. And so when people say, well, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if, you know, if he's going to heal me or, or what's going to happen. Well, then they're in doubt and unbelief and they cannot enter into God's rest and they cannot receive breakthrough because this is number five on the list. And it's, it's really one of the most important points that I want to make tonight is that with faith, believing the Lord, believing what he says in his word, taking him at his word, mixing it with faith, we're going to have breakthrough. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. You know, and I could have put another, you know, few things on here, but number one is to seek the Lord. Number two is to bring judgment on the head of the enemy. You know, deal with your enemies right then. Number three is to hear from the Lord. Number four is to praise him, worship him, sing to him. And number five is to enter into his rest. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 